Hi, my name's Rich Harrington. I'm the publisher of Photofocus.com, and I'm here today to give you a quick start overview of how to use Aurora HDR, the new version 2018, which is now shipping for Mac and Windows. Let's take a look at what is possible using this application. First up, you have the ability to open up single images or to merge multiple photos together. Let me show you a single image workflow quickly. The way that this can work is if you have a single photo, you can go ahead and open that up and tone the image to get the best look. So for example, here's a single exposure from a bracket series, just one image, the base exposure, and I can click Create HDR. You have the ability to tone map, which will maximize the shadows and highlights, trying to give you the most dynamic range, or you can bypass that option if opening up a single image if you want. When you click Create HDR, that single photo will be opened and you'll get a variety of tools which you can use to process and develop the photo. You'll find, for example, along the bottom, several useful presets that even with a single photo, as you can quickly see here, can be used to enhance the image, bringing out great details in the sky and in the rest of the photo. Now, these are organized into useful presets, and I'll mention a little bit later on how you can get our photo focus presets as well, which is a free set that you are welcome to download. All right, now there's a lot that we can do with single images, but really the true benefit is working with multiple brackets. So let's go ahead here and create a new image. I'll choose File Open. I'll select all five of these here in the folder and choose Open and you see that the images are loaded. Now in this case, there's five images and I shot with auto bracketing on my camera to capture the full dynamic range of the scene. Now, additionally, if you're shooting from a handheld situation or not a stable tripod, you can choose alignment to help out. And from the pop-up menu here, there are options for things like ghost reduction, which we'll talk more about later, as well as chromatic aberration removal if you need it. Now, I don't have that problem on these images, so I'll just click Create HDR. The five images are opened and analyzed, and in this case, some basic alignment, and it will pull it in. And this will give us more dynamic range because of the five photos being combined. This is really the true benefit of HDR. Now, across the top are a series of tools, but we can click here to open and close the different panels on the side. So if I don't need the presets, I can get rid of that. Or if I just want to work with presets, I can bring that up. And you'll see from the preset switcher here, lots of options to choose from. So you can quickly audition and try those out. And with each one, you'll get very different looks. And these are quite interesting. Now let's go ahead and go with something from the realistic category. I'll choose realistic HDR. And you see we have a nice wide range. Once you get something up close where you want it, open up the side panel so you can really control things here. And this is where you get all of your filters from top to bottom. Now, you don't have to work with all of these if you don't want, but I'm going to walk you through what they each do at a quick overall introduction. The HDR Basic is where most things happen, and this is really giving you the basic development. So you can go ahead and go after your shadows and highlights, getting a good balance of tone, and then pop things like your white and black point to get nice crisp blacks and bright whites. Additionally, if you'd like a strong HDR look, you can take the HDR Enhance up or tone that down and you'll get a more realistic type image. Now, one of the things I like is the ability to click to close and you see here that we also have color tools, much like you might be used to in Photoshop or Lightroom, the ability to adjust vibrance and saturation as well as a great slider here called Color Contrast that really brings out the rich black point in the image for a very rich color. Now, I usually use that at a lower value. The next area is the HDR structure, and this allows you to really put a lot of detail in the image. You can go after the finer details with microstructure or the general structure. And if you start to see a lot of noise in your HDR image, you can also tone that down. Now, it's a good idea to judge noise viewing at 100% magnification. That's where you can really see it. And Aurora does a nice job of cleaning that up. Another option here is image radiance, which you can use to create essentially some glows in the image. And this really can bring out a bright, 
vivid image that really lifts things up. You can go after the brightness and the shadows, giving it an overall ethereal feel. If you decide you want to change something back to default, just click the reset button and it goes to neutral. That makes it really quick and easy to reset things there. You see, for example, I tone down the HDR structure and I'll just bring the image radiance up, giving me a nice photorealistic image. Another great choice is the polarizing filter here, which does a nice job on skies or reflections. All right, that's working pretty well, but let's try another image here. I'll choose File, Open Images, and let's go to another folder. Now we'll talk about saving a little bit later, but in this case, I'm gonna open up three photos that come from a drone series. We did some bracketing from an aerial drone, and in this case, we definitely need to take advantage of the alignment controls to help merge these together. When I click Create HDR, they're going to be combined, and you'll see the new resulting image. Now, in this case, I wanna show you a couple of other options that I really like, including the ability to do separate adjustments to the top and bottom of the image. Now, let's go ahead and bring in a basic adjustment here. We'll take advantage with our presets for a landscape category. There we go. And I'll go with a simple landscape here. Let's try soft and airy. I like that. Or let's do a simpler one there. That looks good. We'll try landscape detailed and that works well. Now, if you want to do separate adjustments on top and bottom, you can do so you'll see here a great filter called top and bottom tuning. And if you click set orientation, this allows you to adjust where that's going to be placed. In fact, you can even spread this out a little bit separately and adjust the angle if need be to deal with the horizon. So for example, on the top here, if I'd like, I can brighten that up a little bit more with some more contrast and then go down here to the bottom and pull that down a little bit and tone down the colors. And you see that I can adjust those independently, which is great. Speaking of tonal adjustments, you also have a full tone curve, which means that any sort of curves that you're used to doing on the image can allow you to target different areas for simple tonal adjustments, which is great. And one of my favorite tools is the HSL tool. So for example, if I wanna go after sort of this yellowish greenish here I can simply roll that so I'll come here to hue for example and roll the yellows a little greener and you see that the vegetation takes on the desired shade and I'll roll the greens just a little bit greener as well and then under luminance we can tone those down and make them darker and you see that this is great secondary color correction let's go ahead here to the blues for example and lift that up to brighten up the water same for the aqua, I like that. And let's do a little bit of a lift on the reds there with some more saturation for the browns and the oranges. There we go, giving us great color in the woods. Another thing that you might find useful, let's just go ahead here to top and bottom tuning for a second. Now, if you accidentally reset something, you do have full undo control there, as well as a complete history as you work, which is very useful. Let's go ahead here and go to the vignette controls, and you'll see the ability to add a stylistic vignette as well as adjust the feather and the inner brightness if you want to lift that area up a little bit. And you see there that that did quite a bit after the merge on those HDR photos. All right, let's open up another series of images. This time we'll do something simpler, not quite an aerial, and I'll just take a very traditional landscape shot. Select that range and choose open. Let's go ahead and skip saving here. And in this case, because of the stronger backlighting, I am gonna take advantage of the chromatic aberration removal. Now, just let that load in. You'll see the preview of the five images. And once it's loaded, you can click Create HDR. That looks good. You see I really captured a wide dynamic range. And it loads it in. Now, in this case, I wanna be a bit more accurate. I'm gonna bring up my histogram and my info panel there so I could see a bit more about the information. The info shows you the dynamic range, for example, and how many images were used in the bracket series. Let's go ahead and just work quite simply here. We'll bring out a little bit of the HDR enhance, and let's lift the shadows slightly. 
There we go. Recover the highlights a little bit. Pop the whites and rich blacks. I like that. A little bit of contrast. That's looking pretty good. And I'm going to lift the overall exposure slightly. And that's a good base image. Now, what I like is that as you're working, you got a lot of great controls. Now, let's take advantage of that polarizing filter here just to bring out a little bit of the sky. And we'll use that top and bottom tuning, allowing us to set that on the horizon. Let's spread that out a little bit. There we go. And I really like the separate controls here. So, for example, a little gradation at the top with a pop and color for the sky. And on the bottom, let's pull that down a little bit with a little bit of vibrance. Remember, between the top and bottom tuning and the very powerful HSL controls, you can do quite a bit. So if you need to really bring out the color, for example, let's bring out the greens and the reds there. Nice rich image. I'll come under luminance here and lift up the reds and oranges a little bit to brighten that while pulling down the sky ever so slightly. And you see what a great targeted adjustment you could make. All right, I like that, and that's looking pretty good, but I want to take advantage of another set of controls here. You'll see the Transform tool and the Lens Correction tool, which is new here in Aurora 2018. So the Transform, when you select it, will initially turn off the adjustments that you've made with filters. But this gives you great control, so you can easily tilt the image to compensate for perspective issues if needed, and tilt it side to side. You've got the ability to rotate a crooked horizon if needed, and we can actually scale that up a little bit to compensate if needed for the rotation. We've also got the ability to shift the image up or down once scaled. That's great. I'll click apply to compensate. And we've got lens correction here, and this could be useful if you're dealing with things like distortion and you want to straighten out a curve or you have chromatic aberration, or any unwanted darkening at the edges. Remember, you can use those two together as well. And when satisfied, just click Apply, and the filters will be reapplied. Besides the ability to adjust and transform, you'll also find a very versatile crop tool and a wide range of presets here. So whatever size you need to deliver, you can do so. For example, there's a 7x5, and this makes it very simple to crop you can easily reposition that as needed, as you design. And when satisfied, just click the crop button and it's applied. One of the things I really like is you'll notice that the cropping is non-destructive. So if you change your mind or need to crop to another size, you can easily do so. All right, that's working quite well. Now, I like where this is going, but I want to do a little bit more. And one of the things I really love is the ability to work with layers. So if we bring up presets here, I'm going to go to my Photo Focus Inspiration presets, and this is a series of presets that you'll find available for download over on photofocus.com. Just do a search. You may also find them available over on the Aurora HDR site a little bit after the product launches. And what you can do is choose a preset that you'd like to apply. Now, what I suggest is you take advantage of the new preset overlay. This is going to allow you to apply this to a new filter. So the advantage here with the new preset overlay is that it simply makes a new adjustment layer and you can click to apply it. And as you see there, we can take advantage of an additional preset. In this case, a dramatic black and white preset. But I don't actually intend to leave that as black and white. Rather, I want to start to blend this together. So what you can easily do is take advantage of blending modes using things like different blend modes you can try those out and combine them together to create all new looks, especially as you start to blend things together. You'll find full control for the blending mode as well as the overall opacity, so you can mix until you get the desired result. Additionally, if you decide, you might can take advantage of masks. So let's add another preset overlay here, and this time I'll apply the glowy landscape option. But what I want to do is limit that to just the landscape. Now, I'm a big believer in actually renaming my layers here, so let's call this one Glow, and we'll call this one Contrast. That'll just make it a little bit easier to judge what's happening here in the Layers panel. Now, to the right of each layer, you'll see the ability to click and add a mask. 
And what this does is bring up the masking tool. Now, you can decide to use the brush tool or the gradient mask or the radial mask. I'm going to do a gradient mask here and simply click and drag to define the gradient. And then what we can do is view that and you see that it created a nice transition. Now, you can reposition this as needed to create that transition. I like where that's going. And once you're satisfied, just click done and you'll see that transition. And what's happened here is that particular glow is only being applied to a very specific area. In this case, it's applied to the top, but I can easily open that back up and you'll see here that if needed, we can click invert and this allows us to reverse the gradient. You'll also find density and feather controls so you can easily adjust the strength of that and the overall feathering for a greater transition or blend. When satisfied, click done, and you'll see that the mask is going to update. So now that glow is only being applied down to the bottom of my image, leaving the skies alone, but creating a nice healthy glow through the bottom of the HDR image here, which I really like. Now, one of the other things that's really great is when you go to save your images, Aurora has its own file format. So you can choose to keep the original data inside there. Just choose the save original resources to document. And you have the ability to include the history if you want, which gives you the ability to choose undos and make non-destructive edits even after you've closed and reopened the file. Once you click save, all that data will be captured. So in this case, the five brackets are being stored and I've got great flexibility to come back and work with that again. All right, let's take a look here at another image. I'll choose open images. And in this case, I want to talk about ghosts. Now, ghosts are kind of tricky, but what happens is, is if you're dealing with something that's moving a lot inside of an HDR image, it can cause a problem. And that's exactly what happened here. I was shooting a boat and the wind kept blowing the nets around and that created a lot of ghosting. So if I don't choose this option here for ghost reduction, you're going to see a problem. Now we can also choose color denoise if we want, but I'll leave that off and we'll create the HDR. And I want you to see the problem area without the ghost reduction option. So if we take a look over in the nets, you're going to see that there are zones where the nets all sort of get composited together. And this is because they were blowing in the wind and they don't create a smooth blend of the different images together. So you can see here that the net appears in multiple places because of the different brackets. Now, things like the tackle and the ropes aren't bad, but the nets just did not work. And so let's merge that together again and we'll take advantage of the option for ghost reduction. So we'll choose to merge those. And from the pop-up list here, I'll choose ghost reduction. This allows you to specify an image that you want to use. And I generally favor one of the lower exposure ones. And then you can choose how strong of ghost reduction you want. Let's go with high, which is pretty aggressive, which should work very well for this windy day. And I'll click create HDR. Now the images are analyzed and the different brackets are going to be merged together. What you'll see as you take a look at the ghost reduction is that the transition zones where things were blowing and moving quite a bit are not nearly as problematic. Now you could adjust which bracket you use in the ghost reduction as well as how strong or aggressive you get. But you can see here now that the nets are nice and clean and that problem area has gone away. Now here's one of my earlier presets here from that photo focus pack. I really like working in black and white with HDR. And if this is an area that interests you, I wanna give you a couple of tips. Rather than just pulling down saturation and vibrancy all the way, which does work, I wanna suggest that you leave those at lower values and then come on down to the HSL area. Now, using saturation and luminance, you can start to target areas differently allowing you to selectively darken or brighten individual areas. And this is great so that you can create a really reduced chroma image. And using the different sliders here, you can see you can really dial that in. And what I find is that that works nicely so I can create the different transitions.
There we go, let's tone that down a bit. And it feels like a black and white image. Now you can combine that and still pull down the overall vibrance or saturation, but those sliders tend to work pretty nicely together. And surprisingly, that plus a little bit of a tone curve is gonna go a long way. You can also introduce color toning to highlights and shadows if you want, but I really like where that's going. And let's do a slight tone curve here and adjust. There we go, that feels pretty good. One other area that really stands out to me is the very versatile dodge and burn filter. Now this allows you to paint in strokes. So using dodge and burn, you can lighten and darken selectively. So for example, I can choose darken here and adjust the size of my brush, as well as the strength. And as I paint, the areas that I'm painting will get darker. That works quite well. And we can just tone that down a little bit. And you see that the boat gets a bit darker. All right, I like that. Let's go over here to the ropes as well. And I'll darken those down a little bit. Increase that size. And I can paint over those areas. Now, I like where that goes. And you do see that you have the ability, if you want, to erase strokes or lighten. But this can really allow you to selectively manipulate the image. So if you want to make some parts of the image a little brighter, you can do so. Let's go ahead and increase the strength here. And you'll see that as I brush that in, it's going to brighten up a little bit. There we go. Bring that pole out a little bit. I like that. And as I paint, you see it makes that change. So this is quite versatile. And feel free to explore with lighten and darken. But what I find is that it really allows me to selectively adjust the image. In this case, darkening certain areas and brightening others. When satisfied, you can go ahead and use that as is, or you can always adjust the amount slider here to blend the two parts back, the stylized image plus the original image as needed. All right, that works quite well. And you see here, we can really get quite a bit done. Another thing that's nice is the ability that not only can you work with the original image, but you can add additional images. For example, I have a collection of textures here, and I'm just gonna choose this and hit open. It'll add the texture layer in, and from the layers menu here, you can also adjust the image mapping if you want it to fit or scale and this will change how it fits on the canvas. Being able to then apply a blending mode to that means that you can mix those together, using that to give an overall layer, and this can be great to add in some texture to the image as well as a little bit of color. Remember, experiment with the different options here, and you'll see that each one produces very different results. I generally find that things like multiply, overlay and soft light work quite well to really give that the results that you want. And remember, those have their own masks as well if needed. And you can also just use the texture in a black and white view by simply stripping out the color from it, leaving that layer as a black and white layer, but allowing for the addition of great texture to the overlay. So that works quite well. All right, let's go ahead and start to wrap things up here. And I just wanna mention a couple of other things that I find quite helpful. That transform tool is really going to come in handy for lots of different things. So remember that if you're opening up images, they all will have inherent problems. That's because lenses will have distortion or you might have an area that's a bit crooked. Now, if you do start to open something up and you realize you don't need an image, you can close that to remove it from the set. In this case, these images don't seem to have much information. Let's go ahead and create the HDR. And once that is merged, taking advantage of the lens correction and transform tools will really go a long way to enhance the image. Remember, all lenses are inherently going to put some distortion in. You might have also noticed that I opened up RAW files. Aurora HDR 2018 on Mac and Windows does have the ability to work with a wide range of RAW formats. I've used it personally with files from Sony, Olympus, Canon, Nikon, Panasonic, GoPro. All of those have opened up quite nicely. All right, let's click that distortion control there and you'll see the ability to compensate for any perspective issues, which is nice. 
And then under transform here, if needed, I can rotate slightly to compensate. And that's going to really allow me to get that straight horizon in there. Let's scale that up a little bit. And I'll click apply. And then using the basic controls here, let's go ahead and set our white balance. And you see that we can really compensate for any sort of issues. That looks good. Just get the correct area there. And now let's bring this out a little bit with the HDR Enhance. And you see that we have tremendous amount of detail to work with. Remember, presets are also a great starting point, so you can easily explore those. And you'll find some celebrity ones from Captain Chemo, Serge Ramelli, and Trey Radcliffe, as well as other ones that you can use for a wide range of styles. Some of my favorites include the basic category as well as the landscape category. And you can use these to really bring out the details. All right, let's go ahead here and crop just a little bit. I'm gonna bring this into a 16 by nine. There we go. That looks about right. Tighten that up just a little and place. That's good. You'll also notice that if you needed to, you could do some basic rotation here as well. So if you realize that it's not quite straight, you do have the ability to actually rotate here and compensate the angle to fix any distortion issues, as well as recompose that shot. When satisfied, just click Crop, and it updates to the new shape and dimensions. All right, last thing to point out, and that is the powerful batch processing feature. This is currently in Mac only, but will be coming to Windows later on in the fall of 2017. And what I like is the ability to browse and locate a series of images. So for example, I'm just gonna take this folder called batch and I've got several subfolders in it. I'll leave the include subfolders option checked. And when I click open, it's gonna analyze those and find the corresponding images. And what it's gonna be able to do is start to load those in and suggest bracket series. Now, this is nice here, and when you're satisfied, you can tell it that it's brackets. I'll click continue. And then this gives you the ability to choose from any of the preset settings that you have, where the files get saved, how they get named, what format you want to create, including professional formats like Photoshop and TIFF working in 16-bit, You'll also find full support for both Adobe RGB and Profoto RGB for the color profiles. If you need additional options under advanced here, you'll see that you can choose the auto align options, the ability to sharpen, as well as ghost reduction and chromatic aberration removal. What's great about all of this is that then once you click continue, it's gonna go ahead and actually start to merge all of those and generate new files and show you the end results, which is pretty awesome. All right, let's go ahead and cancel that for now. And I would strongly encourage you to explore Aurora 2018. It is available now and you can pre-order or it is shipping depending upon when you watch this video. My name's Rich Harrington and you'll find additional training articles and inspiration over at photofocus.com. And I hope that you found this deep dive tutorial useful to get you up and running.